I think it's safe to say that I'm obsessed with Bloodborne. There's something about the eerie Victorian art style that has always really captivated me. I especially love all the 2D artwork meant to represent all the items in the game from the consumables, weapon, armor, and key items. So I thought, hey, why not take one of these 2D assets and turn them into fully realized 3D animations? Well, that's exactly what we're doing today. In this video, I will be going over how I took this 2D artwork from the game and turned it into this 3D animation using just Blender and Substance Painter with a little After Effects turned in at the end. This video will be the first in a multi-part series where I'll be going over the entire process, starting from the reference gathering, to the sculpting, to the texturing, all the way to the creating complex smoke simulations inside Blender, and then finally doing some post-processing and After Effects to tie the whole thing together. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Surprise, surprise, the first part of the process is going to be gathering all your reference images, in my case, I'll be using PureRef, which is a free software tailor-made for gathering and organizing images. Here you see me gathering all the images I'm going to need, starting with the actual artwork we'll be recreating from the game, that being the Lower Loran Chalice, which is a key item you use to unlock one of the most challenging dungeons in Bloodborne. The design itself basically consists of a human skull sort of being eaten or melting into this design. All the while a load of smoke emanates from the entire thing. Pretty cool stuff. So beyond that, the first images to go and find will be Skull Anatomy reference, which will help me in the sculpting process next. I wanted to make sure I get like really very basic orthographic shots of the human skull that I can take into Blender and overlay in the respective XYZ planes. And then I can use these as reference so I can get all the proportions totally correct. After that, I'll start gathering some material reference images. The step is really not necessary at this point since I'm only gonna be doing sculpting, which is not gonna deal with any material or shader application, but I like getting all my images in one place at the very beginning. It makes me feel a lot more organized than I actually am. And it helps me build the vibe of where I'm gonna go. And it's a good first pass at establishing that. Looking at the original 2D artwork, there seems to be three main materials, those being bone, teeth, and metal. So I start dividing up the images as I collect them into three distinct categories. The bone and teeth are pretty self-explanatory since we're all pretty familiar with how they look and behave as materials. The challenge here is going to be getting the weathering correct with all the yellow discoloration and all the various cracks and imperfections. For the metal chalice material, I had a lot more room to be creative since the original reference had that chalice metal mostly occluded in shadow, so there seemed to be a lot more room to interpretation here. In the end, I went with a tarnished sort of look, not rusty by any means, but more discolored and stained with yellows and greens, kind of like I see when I picture any sort of antique jewelry or cutlery or tableware. I'll keep gathering material images until I feel I've done a good first pass at establishing the vibe. I usually end up adding more images later, especially as I'm in the texturing process, but I feel this is a good starting point to move on into the sculpting process. And here we are ready to sculpt this spooky boy. Now a huge disclaimer before we get too deep into this part of the video. This was actually my first time doing any real 3D sculpting, so what you're about to watch might be somewhat painful and cringe, especially if you're any sort of professional 3D sculptor. Sculpting of the skull itself went good for the most part, it's just when you get to the chalice section there's some pretty noobish mistakes going on and just some pretty scuffed sections where I had to redo entire sections of the mesh. So anyways, at this stage I'm just kind of building out the primary detail of the mesh and just getting the proportions correct based on the reference imagery. At this stage I was being pretty apprehensive about the polygon count but I think eventually I just kind of let it go and just start sculpting at um, dynamic topology of like three or two and we explode into like the millions of polygons but I feel like Blender is quick enough to that it can render and it really doesn't cause any memory issues so I just ended up rendering with an incredibly high poly model towards the end without any issues. And for anyone wondering I'm using a Wacom Cintiq tablet to sculpt I couldn't imagine trying to do anything remotely this complicated with your mouse and keyboard. After I get the proportions correct and I sculpt all the major features, I start moving into the secondary areas of detail. This is where the skull started really coming to life and where I gain a lot more confidence in the process. <laughs> 
I've always been a hard surface modeler, which made me very anxious during the lead up to this project, thinking it would turn out a total disaster. Surprisingly, not only was it not a disaster, I realized I was having a lot more fun doing this than any hard surface project beforehand. I found that you can really get into much more of a relaxed groove sculpting over pulling vertices and adding edge loops and cuts for hours like I would otherwise. So here I am sculpting the teeth, which took a couple of tries to get it right at the beginning. At this stage, I was really gravitating towards the crease, draw, and flatten brushes to build up detail. Later in the time lapse, you'll see me discover the power of the pinch brush to really sharpen areas and tighten grooves and edges that I want to make more pronounced. I start sculpting the mandible out of a different object since I know I'm going to tweak its pose independently of the skull. The process here is pretty similar using a simple primitive as the base and approximating it as much as I can to the skull. Now, some of you might be wondering, why bother sculpt the entire jaw if this will eventually get bully and mostly absorbed into the chalice itself? Well, I wanted to finish sculpting the basic skull and export it to add it to my own personal asset library so I can potentially use this skull in future projects instead of starting from scratch. Having a skull that I can just import instead of starting from scratch for any project that needs it is going to be really awesome. Especially if I do more Bloodborne content where skulls are a pretty recurring motif in their designs. At this point, the skull is 80% done, save for the really fine asymmetrical detail like cracks, dimples, missing teeth, and so forth. I decided I would rather add all these fine details after the chalice is sculpted and boolean with the skull itself. This way I can tailor sculpt all those details and make sure they are, are fitting and in scale with the chalice details. Speaking of the chalice, here I begin creating the outline from to some basic blender curves. I basically just trace the outline from Bloodborne reference and then apply a screw modifier to create the basic mesh out of it. This process is pretty standard and it's pretty good for modeling any sort of object that is symmetrical in all axes, like glasses and any sort of plates or pottery. Now that the easy part is done, I can go ahead and start sculpting the ornamental patterns for the chalice. At this point I was feeling pretty high and mighty from having the skull be a relatively smooth process, so I don't think that the chalice would be really so annoying to deal with. Boy was I wrong. Everything you're seeing me do here is pretty much all going to get scrapped eventually and just totally start over. For some reason I had a really hard time sculpting the symmetrical detail or the pattern itself into something that looked sharp and elegant, like how I picture a Victorian chalice should look like. Now this is where the model is going to start going into its awkward crab face as I start sculpting these chalice arms. I mean, just look at how adorable it looks. Spooky little baby crab arm boy. Anyways, I start blocking out the shape of the arms with a snake hook tool brush. From what I understand, this basically pulls and creates a lot of geometry that will follow your brush strokes. This is especially useful when sculpting a lot of thin but protruding details such as horns or sharp teeth. Like the base of the chalice, I also end up redoing most of this arm sculpting towards the end of the sculpting process. Basically, I had a hard time sculpting detail on this topology while keeping the silhouette of the arms intact. If you're paying attention here, you can see me really struggle doing something very simple like just cutting out a boolean out of the arms. For some reason, it didn't click with me that I could just use a simple primitive and cut out that section that I needed. I believe I end up coming back once I'm much more confident with the pinch brush, which helps me build up a lot of the sharp edges that will really refine the look of the arms. And here you can see me kind of flip-flopping between adding detail to the arms or adding detail to the mint section of the chalice. Specifically the ornamental pattern in casing what looks to be some kind of blue gemstone in the center. Now this is where you'll really see me struggle trying to refine the pattern in the base of the chalice. For some reason, the more I tried to add creases and grooves, the more doughy and soft the geometry ended up looking. 
it reminded me more of some kind of handmade pottery than the hand carved metal look I was going for. And this is where I end up smoothing everything out and then just starting over with more consistent and confident brush strokes than before, which ended up looking a lot better in my opinion. I really didn't end up doing anything too much different this time, it just ended up looking a lot better for some reason. Just the mysteries of sculpting. And here you see me redo the arms as well. For some reason it also turned out a lot better. Even though the tools I were using was the same. I suppose I was a lot more confident with the pinch tool this time, but I'm still not entirely sure what went wrong the first time. At this point I was getting into a pretty confident groove to build up this arm detail. I would start building up the edge with the draw or layer brush, then use the pinch and flatten brush to tighten that edge and make it look more refined. For the spherical endpoints, I just used the inflate brush on the tip of the arms until I got it to a size I was comfortable with. Now at this stage I'm adding all the uh, final detail that you will see on the skull, such as creases, dimples, missing teeth and so forth. This is also the first time I've removed the symmetry tool, which means I'm working in asymmetrical detail now. So any work done past this point I will have to repeat on both sides of the mesh. Now we're moving on towards actually merging the chalice and the skull itself. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record when I started work that day, so we're going to miss the section of me posing and bullying the skull with the chalice body. Oh well. Here I am just having fun creating the sort of tendril arms that morph out of the chalice that kind of seem to be swallowing and enveloping the skull. I took some creative liberties here and deviated a bit from the source material, trying to make the composition of the tendrils a little more what I would consider more satisfying to look at. Hopefully that was the right decision in the end. It's definitely pretty hard to tell what's going on from a lore perspective in this section. It feels like the skull is kind of growing or the chalice is growing into the skull, like the limbs of a tree, or maybe it's melting. They're melting together, like sort of like candle wax. And here is the final sculpt. All in all, pretty happy with how it turned out, even though the road to get there was somewhat bumpy in a few places. I think I'll definitely be doing a lot more sculpting projects in the future. This is definitely a lot more enjoyable process than doing any of the hard surface stuff. Well, that's all I have for today. Stay tuned for the next part of this series where I'll be going over the texturing, smoke simulations, and rendering. Until next time.